Are you feeling stuck in your comfort zone, yearning for growth and change but not sure how to break free? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, I want to share with you five key principles that will help you step out of your comfort zone and unlock your full potential. Many of us are content with living a comfortable and predictable life. But deep down, we know that true growth and success lie outside of our comfort zone. Trust me, I understand the fear and uncertainty that comes with stepping into the unknown. But I also know that the rewards that await us are far greater than the temporary discomfort we may feel. So, if you're ready to take control of your life and make a positive change, then this video is for you. By the end of it, you will have a clear understanding of what it takes to break free from your comfort zone and start living the life you truly desire. Let's get started. Starting with the fifth key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is surrounding yourself with supportive people. This key is often overlooked, but it is crucial to your personal development and success. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, who are you surrounding yourself with? Are they lifting you up or holding you back? Let me tell you a story. When I was a young man, I was working as a stock clerk at a department store. I was content with my job and my life until one day, I met a successful businessman who changed my perspective. He told me, Jim, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with successful people. Those words stuck with me, and I made a decision to change my circle of influence. I sought out successful and inspiring individuals, and I was amazed at the impact it had on my life. I started to think bigger, dream bigger, and take action towards my goals. I was no longer content with just getting by. I wanted to excel and achieve greatness. And it all started with surrounding myself with supportive people. When you surround yourself with supportive people, you are creating an environment that fosters growth and success. These people will push you to be your best self. They will challenge you to think outside the box, and they will hold you accountable for your actions. They will be there to celebrate your successes and lift you up during your failures. They will inspire and motivate you to keep going when you feel like giving up. On the other hand, when you surround yourself with negative and unsupportive people, you are limiting your potential. These people will bring you down, discourage you from taking risks, and make you doubt your abilities. They will be quick to point out your flaws and failures, and they will not hesitate to bring you back down to their level. As a result, you will find yourself stuck in your comfort zone, afraid to take that leap of faith towards your dreams. But let me ask you this. Do you want to live a life of mediocrity or a life of greatness? Do you want to look back on your life and wonder, what if? Or do you want to look back with no regrets, knowing that you gave it your all? The choice is yours, my friends, and it all starts with the people you choose to surround yourself with. Now I understand that it may not be easy to cut ties with negative and unsupportive people, especially if they are family or longtime friends. But you must remember that your life and your dreams are at stake. You owe it to yourself to surround yourself with people who will help you grow and become the best version of yourself. So, how can you surround yourself with supportive people? First and foremost, you must be clear about your goals and values. When you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve, it becomes easier to attract people who share the same goals and values as you. These people will be your tribe, your support system, and your cheerleaders. Secondly, be intentional about who you spend your time with. Seek out networking events, seminars, and workshops where you can meet like-minded individuals. Join a mastermind group or a mentorship program where you can learn from successful and supportive individuals. Lastly, be a supportive person yourself. The law of attraction states that like attracts like. If you want to surround yourself with supportive people, you must also be a supportive person. Encourage and uplift others, celebrate their successes, and be there for them during their failures. By being a supportive person, you will attract supportive people into your life. Which leads us to the fourth key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is learning from failures. We all have dreams and aspirations, but many of us are held back by fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. We stay in our comfort zones, playing it safe, and never truly reaching our full potential. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared. Failure is a necessary part of the journey to success. Think about it. Every successful person you know has experienced failure at some point in their life, 
Thomas Edison failed over 1,000 times before he invented the light bulb. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for television. But did they let their failures define them? No, they used them as stepping stones to greatness. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. It is through failure that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. So why do we fear it? Because we have been conditioned to believe that failure is a bad thing. We are taught from a young age that we must always succeed, that failure is a sign of weakness. But I am here to tell you that failure is a sign of courage. It takes courage to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. It takes courage to risk failure in pursuit of your dreams. And it takes even more courage to get back up after a failure and try again. But that is exactly what we must do if we want to achieve our goals and reach our full potential. I want you to think about a time when you failed. Maybe it was a failed relationship, a failed business venture, or a failed exam. How did you feel? Disappointed? Discouraged? Maybe even embarrassed? But let me ask you this. Did you learn something from that failure? Did you grow as a person? I bet you did. And that, my friends, is the beauty of failure. Failure is not the end, it is the beginning. It is an opportunity to learn and improve. Just like a baby learning to walk, we must stumble and fall before we can take our first steps. And just like that baby, we must keep getting back up and trying again until we can walk and then run towards our dreams. But learning from failure is not just about picking ourselves back up and trying again. It is about analyzing our failures and understanding why they happened. What can we learn from this experience? What mistakes did we make? How can we do better next time? These are the questions we must ask ourselves in order to grow and improve. I want you to think about a successful person you admire. What do you think their journey to success looked like? I can guarantee you it was not a smooth, straight path. They faced failures, setbacks and obstacles, just like you and I. But the difference is, they did not let those failures stop them. They used them as opportunities to learn and grow. And that is what ultimately led them to success. Do not let failure hold you back or define you. Use it as a tool for growth and improvement. Take risks, step out of your comfort zone, and do not be afraid to fail. Because every failure brings you one step closer to success. Which leads us to the third key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is taking small steps. We all have dreams and aspirations, big goals that we want to achieve, and a vision of the life we want to live. But oftentimes, we get overwhelmed by the enormity of these goals and end up staying in our comfort zone. We make excuses, we procrastinate, and we convince ourselves that we are not ready yet. But let me tell you my friends, there is no perfect time to start. The time is now. And the key to getting started is taking small steps. You see, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It may seem like a cliché, but it holds so much truth. We often think that to achieve big things, we need to take big leaps. But the truth is, it is the small consistent steps that lead us towards our goals. It is the daily habits, the small actions, and the little choices that we make that shape our lives. Think about it. If you want to lose weight, you don't start by running a marathon. You start by taking a walk around the block. If you want to write a book, you don't start by writing the whole thing in one sitting. You start by writing a page every day. If you want to start a business, you don't start by investing all your savings. You start by researching, planning, and taking small steps towards your goal. The same goes for getting out of your comfort zone and growing as a person. It may seem intimidating to step out of your comfort zone, but if you take small steps, it becomes more manageable. You don't have to take a giant leap. You just have to take one small step at a time. So, what are these small steps? How do we take them? First and foremost, you need to have a clear understanding of your goals. What is it that you want to achieve? What is your vision for your life? Once you have a clear picture, break it down into smaller achievable goals. This will make it less daunting and more attainable. Next, you need to take action. It's not enough to just have a goal. You need to take action towards it. Remember, small steps lead to big results. So, instead of waiting for the perfect time, Take action now. Start with the smallest step possible, and then build on it. For example, if your goal is to start a business, you can start by researching your industry, identifying your target market, 
or creating a business plan. These may seem like small steps, but they are crucial in achieving your bigger goal. Another important aspect of taking small steps is developing a growth mindset. This means being open to learning, making mistakes, and trying again. When we take small steps, we are more likely to make mistakes, and that's okay. It's part of the learning process. Instead of being discouraged by these mistakes, we should see them as opportunities to grow and improve. As the saying goes, sail forward. Moreover, taking small steps also allows us to build momentum. When we achieve small wins, it motivates us to keep going. It gives us the confidence to take bigger steps towards our goals. So even if the progress may seem slow at first, trust that it will eventually lead to significant growth and progress. Lastly, taking small steps also helps us to stay consistent. Consistency is key in achieving anything worthwhile. It's not about doing something once in a while. It's about doing it every day. When we take small steps consistently, it becomes a habit, and that habit leads to success. My friends, getting out of your comfort zone and growing as a person is not easy. It takes courage, determination, and a willingness to take small steps towards your goals. But I can assure you, the rewards are worth it. When you step out of your comfort zone, you open yourself up to new opportunities, experiences, and growth. You become a better version of yourself, and that is something that no one can take away from you. Which leads us to the number two key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is set clear goals. Goals are the roadmap to success. They give us direction, purpose, and motivation. Without goals, we are aimless, wandering through life without a clear destination. But setting goals is not enough. We must set clear, specific, and achievable goals. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a New Year's resolution? Maybe you wanted to lose weight, start a new business, or learn a new skill. But how many of us actually follow through with our resolutions? The truth is, most of us fail because we set vague and unrealistic goals. For example, if your goal is to lose weight, that is not specific enough. How much weight do you want to lose? By when? How will you do it? On the other hand, if your goal is to lose 20 ladies in 3 months by exercising 3 times a week and eating a balanced diet, that is a clear and specific goal that you can work towards. When we set clear goals, we are giving ourselves a target to aim for. We are creating a sense of urgency and accountability. And most importantly, we are giving ourselves a reason to step out of our comfort zone. Let me share with you a personal story about the power of setting clear goals. When I was a young man, I had a dream of becoming a millionaire. But I was stuck in a dead-end job, barely making ends meet. I knew that in order to achieve my dream, I had to do something drastic. I had to leave my comfort zone. So I set a clear goal to become a millionaire by the age of 30. I wrote it down, I visualized it, and I worked towards it every single day. And you know what? I achieved my goal at the age of 31. But it wasn't easy. I had to take risks. I had to work harder than ever before, and I had to face my fears and doubts. But because I had a clear goal, I was able to push through my comfort zone and achieve success. Now I'm not saying that setting clear goals will guarantee success. There will be challenges and setbacks along the way. But having a clear goal will give you the motivation and determination to keep going, even when things get tough. So how do we set clear goals? First, start by identifying what you truly want in life. What are your dreams and aspirations? What do you want to achieve in the next 5, 10, or 20 years? Write it down and make it as specific as possible. Next, break down your goal into smaller achievable steps. This will make your goal less overwhelming and more manageable. For example, if your goal is to start a business, your smaller steps could be to research your market, create a business plan, and secure funding. Then, set a timeline for each step and hold yourself accountable. This could mean setting deadlines or finding an accountability partner to keep you on track. And most importantly, take action. It's not enough to just set goals. You must take action towards achieving them. Now I know that stepping out of your comfort zone can be scary. It's natural to feel fear and doubt when trying something new. But remember, fear is just a feeling. It does not have to control your actions. You have the power to overcome your fears and achieve your goals. And here's the beauty of setting clear goals. Every time you achieve a goal, you gain confidence and momentum. You start to believe in yourself and your abilities. And before you know it, you will be achieving things you never thought possible.
which leads us to the number one key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing, which is embrace discomfort. We all have a comfort zone, a place where we feel safe, secure, and in control. It is where we are familiar with our surroundings and our abilities. But here's the thing. Nothing extraordinary ever happens within our comfort zone. Growth and success lie outside of our comfort zone. It is only when we step out of our comfort zone that we can truly discover our potential and achieve greatness. But why is it so hard for us to leave our comfort zone? The answer is simple. Discomfort. We are afraid of discomfort, of the unknown, of failure. But what if I told you that discomfort is not something to be feared, but rather something to be embraced? Embracing discomfort is the number one key to getting out of your comfort zone and growing as an individual. It is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, why would I willingly put myself in uncomfortable situations? That sounds crazy. Well, let me tell you why. First and foremost, discomfort is a sign of growth. When we are faced with discomfort, it means we are pushing ourselves beyond our limits. And that is where growth happens. Just like a muscle, our comfort zone needs to be stretched and challenged in order to become stronger. And the stronger our comfort zone becomes, the more we are able to handle discomfort, and the more we can achieve. Think about it. When you first started learning how to ride a bike, it was uncomfortable and challenging. But with practice and perseverance, you were able to master it. And now, riding a bike is second nature to you. The same principle applies to every aspect of our lives. Whether it's starting a new job, learning a new skill, or stepping out of our comfort zone in any other way. Embracing discomfort is the only way to grow and achieve our goals. Secondly, discomfort leads to new experiences and opportunities. When we stay within our comfort zone, we limit ourselves to what we already know and are comfortable with. But when we embrace discomfort, we open ourselves up to new experiences and opportunities that we never would have had otherwise. These new experiences can lead us to new passions, new skills, and new relationships that can enrich our lives in ways we never thought possible. For example, let's say you have always been interested in public speaking, but you've been too afraid to try it. By stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing the discomfort of speaking in front of a crowd, you may discover a hidden talent and passion for public speaking. This could open up opportunities for you to become a motivational speaker, a leader in your community, or even a TED Talk speaker. The possibilities are endless when we embrace discomfort. Lastly, discomfort builds resilience and confidence. The more we are able to handle discomfort, the more resilient we become. We learn to adapt and overcome challenges, and this builds our confidence and self-belief. When we push ourselves out of our comfort zone and succeed, we prove to ourselves that we are capable of achieving anything we set our minds to. This confidence and resilience then spills over into other areas of our lives, making us stronger and more successful individuals. Now I know embracing discomfort is easier said than done. It's not something that happens overnight. It takes practice and effort. But the good news is, discomfort is like a muscle. The more we exercise it, the stronger it becomes. So how do we start embracing discomfort and getting out of our comfort zone? The first step is to identify what makes us uncomfortable. Is it public speaking? Taking on a new project at work? Meeting new people? Whatever it may be, start small and take baby steps. For example, if public speaking makes you uncomfortable, start by speaking in front of a small group with friends or family. As you become more comfortable, gradually increase the size of your audience. The second step is to change your mindset. Instead of seeing discomfort as something negative, see it as a sign of growth and opportunity. Remind yourself that the discomfort is temporary, but the growth and opportunities that come from it are long-lasting. And lastly, surround yourself with people who push you out of your comfort zone. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Surround yourself with people who challenge and inspire you to be better, and who support you in your journey towards personal growth. Always remember, the greatest growth happens when we are willing to be uncomfortable. Thank you. I believe that the way we start our morning sets the tone for the rest of our day. If we can transform our mornings, we can transform our entire lives. In today's message, I want to share with you five keys to transforming your mornings. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mornings can be tough. Waking up early, rushing to get ready, dealing with traffic or a busy schedule. It can all feel overwhelming. 
but I want you to know that you are not alone. We have all been there, struggling to find a sense of balance and purpose in our mornings. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you are taking the first step towards turning things around. You are taking control of your mornings, and ultimately, your life. These five T's that I will be sharing with you today have been tried and tested by myself and countless others. I can guarantee that they will make a positive impact on your daily routine. By the end of this message, you will have the tools and knowledge to transform your mornings and set yourself up for success. So let's dive in and make the most out of every single day. Starting with number five, which is transforming your mornings by focusing on self-care. When we talk about self-care, Many of you may think of indulging in luxurious spa treatments or taking a day off from work. While those things are certainly enjoyable, self-care goes much deeper than that. It is about taking care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. It is about making a conscious effort to prioritize our own needs and well-being. So why is self-care so crucial, especially in the mornings? Well, let me ask you this. How many of you wake up feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to conquer the day? I'm sure not many of you can say yes to that. And that is because we often neglect ourselves in the morning rush. We jump out of bed, check our phones, rush to get dressed, and head out the door without even taking a moment to breathe and focus on ourselves. But here's the thing. How we start our morning sets the tone for the entire day. If we wake up feeling stressed, rushed, and overwhelmed, that is how our day will continue. On the other hand, if we start our day with self-care, we will feel more relaxed, focused, and ready to tackle any challenges that come our way. So how can we incorporate self-care into our morning routine? Well, it all starts with the night before. A good night's sleep is crucial for our physical and mental well-being. Make sure to get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep and try to establish a consistent sleep schedule. This will help you wake up feeling refreshed and energized. Next, take a few moments to set your intentions for the next day. Write down your goals, tasks, and priorities for the day ahead. This will help you stay focused and motivated throughout the day. Now, when you wake up in the morning, resist the urge to check your phone or emails right away. Instead, take a few deep breaths and practice gratitude. Think about all the things you are grateful for in your life. This will help you start your day with a positive mindset. Next, it's time to nourish your body. Make sure to have a healthy breakfast, drink plenty of water, and maybe even do some light stretching or exercise. Taking care of our physical health is essential for our overall well-being. But self-care is not just about our physical health. It's also about our mental and emotional health. Take a few moments to do something that brings you joy, whether it's reading a book, listening to music, or practicing a hobby. This will help you start your day feeling more fulfilled and happy. And finally, before you head out the door, take a few moments to practice self-care in the form of self-affirmations. Look at yourself in the mirror and say positive affirmations such as, I am capable, I am worthy, I am enough. This will help boost your self-confidence and set a positive tone for your day. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. I don't have time for all of this in the morning. But here's the thing. We make time for what is important to us, and taking care of ourselves should be a top priority. Remember, we cannot pour from an empty cup. We must take care of ourselves first, before we can take care of others. Incorporating self-care into our morning routine may seem like a small change, but it can make a significant impact on our lives. Not only will it help us start our day feeling more relaxed and focused, but it will also improve our overall well-being in the long run. Which leads us to number four, transforming your mornings by practicing gratitude. So why is gratitude so important? Have you ever woken up feeling stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? I'm sure we all have. And what do we usually do in those situations? We start our day by checking our phones, scrolling through social media, and bombarding ourselves with even more information and distractions. But what if I told you that by simply practicing gratitude in the morning, you can change the entire course of your day? Gratitude is a powerful emotion that has the ability to shift our perspective and mindset. When we start our day by focusing on the things we are grateful for, we set ourselves up for a positive and productive day. So how can we practice gratitude in the morning? It's simple. The first thing you can do is start a gratitude journal. Every morning before you even get out of bed, take a few minutes to write down three things you are grateful for. It can be as simple as having a roof over your head, a loving family, 
or even the fact that you woke up today. By doing this, you are setting your intentions for the day and starting off on a positive note. Another way to practice gratitude in the morning is through meditation. Take a few minutes to sit in silence and focus on all the things you are grateful for. This will not only help you feel more centered and calm, but it will also allow you to start your day with a grateful heart. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, my mornings are so hectic, I don't have time for all of this. And my response to that is, you don't have time not to do it. By taking just a few minutes to practice gratitude in the morning, you are setting yourself up for a more productive and fulfilling day. And let's be honest, we all have a few minutes to spare in the morning. Instead of hitting the snooze button or scrolling through social media, use that time to focus on gratitude. But it's not just about practicing gratitude in the morning. It's about making it a part of your daily routine. Throughout the day, take a moment to pause and reflect on all the things you are grateful for. It could be something as small as a kind gesture from a stranger, or something as big as a promotion at work. By constantly reminding ourselves of the good in our lives, we are training our minds to have a more positive outlook. Now, I want to challenge you all to take it a step further. Instead of just focusing on the things you are grateful for, also focus on the people you are grateful for. Take a moment to express your gratitude to someone who has had a positive impact on your life. It could be a friend, a family member, a mentor, or even a colleague. By spreading gratitude, we not only make someone else's day better, but we also strengthen our relationships and create a ripple effect of positivity. Which leads us to number three, transforming your mornings by planning ahead. Planning ahead is a crucial step in achieving success in any aspect of our lives. It allows us to be intentional with our time and energy, and it sets us up for success. So let me share with you three key steps to planning ahead for a successful morning. The first step is to set a goal for your morning. What do you want to accomplish in the morning? Is it exercising, reading, or spending time with your loved ones? Whatever it may be, write it down and make it a priority. Setting a goal gives us a sense of direction and purpose for our mornings. It motivates us to wake up early and start our day with intention. The second step is to create a plan. Once you have your goal in mind, it's time to create a plan to achieve it. For example, if your goal is to exercise in the morning, plan out what time you will wake up, what exercises you will do, and for how long. Having a plan in place eliminates any guesswork and allows us to be more efficient with our time. The third and final step is to visualize your morning routine. Visualization is a powerful tool that helps us manifest our desires. Take a few moments before going to bed to visualize yourself waking up early, feeling energized, and accomplishing your goal for the morning. This not only sets our mind in the right direction, but also helps us wake up with a sense of purpose and motivation. Now you may be thinking, but Jim, I am not a morning person. I struggle to wake up early. Trust me, I understand. I used to be the same way. But let me tell you, waking up early and planning ahead can transform your life. It gives you a head start on the day, and you will be amazed at how much you can accomplish in the morning when you have a plan in place. I want to share with you a quote by Benjamin Franklin. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. This quote holds so much truth. When we wake up early, we have more time to take care of ourselves, our goals, and our relationships. We have more time to invest in our personal growth, which ultimately leads to success in all areas of our lives. Now I understand that life can be unpredictable, and there may be days where our morning routine gets disrupted. But that's okay. The key is to not let one bad morning throw off the rest of your day or week. Instead, use that opportunity to practice resilience and adaptability. Remember, success is not about being perfect every day, but rather consistently making an effort to improve and grow. Which leads us to number two, transforming your mornings by getting enough sleep. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Jim, how can sleep possibly have an impact on our mornings? Well, let me tell you. My friends, sleep is not just a state of rest for our bodies. It is also a crucial factor in our overall well-being and success. Think about it. Have you ever woken up after a good night's sleep feeling refreshed, energized, and ready to take on the day? I'm sure you have. And on the other hand, have you ever had a night of tossing and turning, only to wake up feeling groggy, irritable and unmotivated? I'm sure we've all been there. The quality and quantity of our sleep directly affect our physical, mental and emotional state, 
which ultimately impacts our productivity and success. Now, I understand that in this fast-paced world, sleep is often seen as a luxury. We are bombarded with work responsibilities and distractions that make it difficult to prioritize our sleep. But let me tell you, neglecting our sleep is a grave mistake. It not only affects our mornings but also our entire day, and eventually our overall well-being. So how can we ensure that we get enough sleep and transform our mornings? The first step is to understand the importance of sleep. As I mentioned earlier, sleep is not just a state of rest, but it is a vital process that allows our bodies and minds to repair and rejuvenate. It is during sleep that our bodies heal. Our memories are consolidated, and our minds process and store information. Without adequate sleep, our bodies and minds cannot function at their best. The second step is to prioritize our sleep. I know it can be tempting to stay up late to finish that last episode of your favorite show or to scroll through social media. But we must understand that our sleep is not negotiable. We must make a conscious effort to set a bedtime and stick to it. Just like we schedule our meetings and appointments, we must schedule our sleep. The third step is to create a sleep-friendly environment. Our bedroom should be a sanctuary for sleep. It should be dark, quiet, and cool. The use of electronic devices before bedtime should also be limited, as the blue light emitted from them can disrupt our sleep patterns. Instead, try reading a book or practicing relaxation techniques before bed to help you wind down. The fourth step is to establish a bedtime routine. Just like how we have a morning routine, a bedtime routine can help signal our bodies that it is time to sleep. It can include activities such as taking a warm bath, listening to calming music, or practicing gratitude. Find what works for you, and stick to it. Now, I understand that changing our habits and routines can be challenging, especially when it comes to sleep. But let me tell you, my friends, the benefits of getting enough sleep are worth it. Not only will you wake up feeling refreshed and energized, but you will also have improved focus, memory, and mood. And most importantly, you will be able to start your day with a positive attitude, which we all know is the number one way to transform our mornings. Which leads us to number one. Transforming your mornings by creating a morning routine. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. A morning routine? That sounds boring and mundane. But let me tell you my friends, a morning routine is anything but ordinary. In fact, it is the foundation for a successful and fulfilling life. You see, how you start your day sets the tone for the rest of it. It is like laying the first brick in the construction of a building. If that brick is not in the right place, the entire structure will be off. Similarly, if you do not start your day on the right foot, the rest of it will be a struggle. So what exactly is a morning routine? It is a set of intentional and consistent actions that you take every morning to set yourself up for success. It is not just about waking up early or having a cup of coffee. It is about creating a ritual that nourishes your mind, body, and soul. It is about taking control of your day instead of letting the day control you. Now, I am not saying that you have to wake up at the crack of dawn or follow a strict schedule. Your morning routine should be tailored to your needs and preferences. The key is to be intentional and consistent with it. So I urge you to create a morning routine that works for you and stick to it. I promise you, it will be the best decision you ever make. Thank you. Hello friends, Jim here today with an important message for you, a message that I believe will help you turn your life around. In today's message, we will be discussing the topic of goal setting. Now I know what you're thinking, I've heard it all before. Set goals, work hard, and you'll achieve success. But the reality is, many of us struggle with setting and achieving our goals. We start off with great intentions, but somewhere along the way, we lose steam and end up back at square one. If this sounds familiar to you, then you are not alone. In fact, millions of people struggle with goal setting and fail to achieve their desired outcomes. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you can turn things around. I will be sharing with you the top five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting and how to overcome them. These are the same principles that have helped me and countless others achieve success in our personal and professional lives. So get ready to take notes, and let's dive into the five reasons why you keep failing at goal setting. Number five is unrealistic expectations. When goal setting, we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with messages of instant gratification and overnight success. We see people on social media living seemingly perfect lives, achieving great success and wealth in a short amount of time. 
and it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that we too can achieve our goals just as quickly and easily. But the truth is, these unrealistic expectations can be detrimental to our personal growth and success. Let me ask you this. Have you ever set a goal for yourself and felt disappointed or discouraged when you didn't achieve it as quickly as you had hoped? Have you ever compared your progress to someone else's and felt like you were falling behind? I know I have. And it's because we have been conditioned to believe that success is a straight line, a quick and easy journey. But the reality is, success is a winding road full of ups and downs, and it takes time and effort to reach our goals. We must understand that setting unrealistic expectations for ourselves is setting ourselves up for failure. It's like trying to run a marathon without training for it. We may have the desire and determination, but without proper preparation and realistic expectations, we will not reach the finish line. So, what can we do to avoid these unrealistic expectations when goal setting? The first step is to understand that success is a process, not an event. It's not something that happens overnight, but rather a journey that requires patience, persistence, and hard work. We must be willing to put in the time and effort to achieve our goals and not expect instant results. Next, we must be honest with ourselves about our capabilities and limitations. It's important to set goals that are challenging, yet attainable. If we set goals that are too high, we may become overwhelmed and give up. On the other hand, if we set goals that are too low, we may not push ourselves to reach our full potential. It's about finding the balance and setting realistic expectations for ourselves. Another key factor in avoiding unrealistic expectations is to focus on progress, not perfection. We are human, and we will make mistakes along the way. But instead of beating ourselves up for not being perfect, we must celebrate our progress and use our mistakes as learning opportunities. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time to achieve greatness, and we must be patient with ourselves. Furthermore, we must let go of the comparison game. It's easy to look at someone else's success and feel like we are not doing enough. But the truth is, everyone's journey is different. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses, and we must focus on our own progress and not compare it to others. As Theodore Roosevelt once said, Comparison is the thief of joy. Let's not allow comparison to steal our joy and motivation. Lastly, we must have a positive mindset. Our thoughts and beliefs have a powerful impact on our actions and ultimately our results. If we constantly doubt ourselves and our abilities, we will never reach our full potential. We must believe in ourselves and our goals and have faith that we can achieve them. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Number four is the lack of commitment. You see, commitment is the foundation of success. Without it, your dreams and goals will remain just that. Dreams and goals. It is the fuel that drives us toward our desired destination. And yet, so many of us struggle with it. Why is that? Why is it that we struggle to stay committed to our goals and aspirations? The answer is simple. It's hard. It's not easy to stay committed, especially when faced with obstacles and challenges. But here's the thing. Anything worth having is never easy. If it were, everyone would have it. But let me tell you something. The road to success is not meant to be easy. It is meant to test you, to push you to your limits, and to make you stronger. And it is in those moments of struggle that your commitment is truly tested. It is easy to stay committed when everything is going smoothly. But it is during the tough times that your commitment truly shines. So how do we overcome this lack of commitment? How do we stay committed to our goals and dreams even when faced with challenges? The first step is to have a clear vision. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve. Without a clear vision, your commitment will waver, and you will easily be swayed by distractions and obstacles. Once you have a clear vision, the next step is to set specific and achievable goals. These goals should be challenging enough to push you, but also realistic enough for you to believe that you can achieve them. Write them down, make them tangible, and hold yourself accountable for them. But here's the thing. Setting goals is not enough. You must also have a plan of action. How will you achieve these goals? What steps do you need to take? What resources do you need? Having a plan will not only keep you on track, but it will also give you a sense of direction and purpose. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I've tried all of that, and I still struggle with commitment. Well, my friends, it's time to change your mindset. You see, commitment is not something that you have. 
It is something that you do. It is a daily choice that you make, a commitment to yourself and your goals. And let me tell you something. Commitment is not always easy. There will be days when you don't feel like doing the work, when you want to give up, when you doubt yourself. But it is during these moments that you must remind yourself of your why. Why did you set these goals in the first place? What is your ultimate vision? And most importantly, what will happen if you give up? You see, the pain of regret is far greater than the pain of discipline. And I can guarantee you, if you give up on your goals and dreams, you will regret it for the rest of your life. But if you stay committed, if you push through the tough times, if you keep moving forward, the rewards will be far greater than you can ever imagine. But here's the thing. Commitment is not just about achieving your goals. It's about personal growth and development. It's about becoming the best version of yourself. And let me tell you something. The journey toward success is just as important as the destination. As you work toward your goals, you will face challenges, you will make mistakes, and you will learn valuable lessons. Embrace these moments, because they are what will shape you into the person you are meant to be. Number three is not having a plan when goal setting, or more specifically, the consequences of not having a plan when it comes to goal setting. As I stand here today, I'm reminded of a quote by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. A goal without a plan is just a wish. How many of us have goals and dreams that we have yet to achieve? How many of us have made resolutions at the beginning of the year, only to find ourselves in the same place at the end of it? I believe that one of the reasons for this is the lack of a proper plan. You see, setting goals is easy. We all have dreams and desires that we want to achieve. However, it is the execution of those goals that separates the successful from the unsuccessful. And a crucial part of execution is having a plan. Let me give you an example. Imagine you want to build a house. You have a vision of what you want it to look like, the number of rooms, the color scheme, and the location. But if you don't have a blueprint or a plan, how will you bring that vision to life? How will you know where to start, what materials to use, and how long it will take? It's the same with our goals. Without a plan, we are just wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. Now some of you may argue that having a plan is too restrictive that it takes away the spontaneity and excitement of life. But let me tell you this. A plan is not meant to be rigid. It is meant to be a guide, a roadmap that will lead you to your desired destination. And just like a GPS, it can be adjusted and recalibrated as needed. Having a plan when goal setting is not about restricting yourself. It's about giving yourself direction and purpose. It's about taking control of your life and making intentional choices that will lead you to where you want to be. But what happens when we don't have a plan? When we approach our goals haphazardly, without any direction or strategy? Well, the first consequence is that we waste time. Time is our most valuable asset, and we cannot afford to waste it. Without a plan, we find ourselves going around in circles, trying different things but never making any real progress. And before we know it, another year has passed, and we are no closer to our goals. The second consequence of not having a plan is that we become easily distracted. We live in a world where distractions are everywhere, social media, Netflix, and endless notifications. Without a plan, we are more likely to give in to these distractions and lose focus on what truly matters to us. We become reactive instead of proactive, letting external factors dictate our actions rather than our own intentions. And the third consequence is that we become demotivated. When we don't see any progress towards our goals, we start to doubt ourselves and our abilities. We start to question if our dreams are even achievable, and this demotivation can lead to giving up on our goals altogether. But my friends, it doesn't have to be this way. It's not too late to turn things around. It's not too late to start making progress towards your goals. And it all starts with having a plan. So, how do we create a plan for our goals? The first step is to get clear on what you want. You cannot create a plan if you don't know what you're aiming for. Take some time to reflect on your goals and write them down. Be specific and make sure they align with your values and passions. The second step is to break down your goals into smaller manageable tasks. This will make them less overwhelming and more achievable. Think of it as climbing a mountain. You don't start at the top. You take one step at a time. The third step is to set a timeline for each task. This will give you a sense of urgency and help you stay on track. But it's also essential to be realistic with your timeline and allow for some flexibility. Remember, 
A plan is not set in stone. And finally, the last step is to take action. A plan is useless if you don't act on it. It's like having a map but not moving your feet. So make a commitment to yourself to take consistent action towards your goals. And don't be afraid to adjust your plan as needed. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes we have to adapt to new circumstances. With number two, I want to address a common obstacle that many of us face when setting goals. The fear of failure. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a dream, a goal, a burning desire in your heart, but the thought of failing stopped you from even attempting to pursue it? Have you ever let the fear of failure hold you back from reaching your full potential? If you answered yes, then you are not alone. Fear of failure is a common struggle that we all face, but it is up to us to overcome it. You see, fear of failure is not something that we are born with. It is something that we learn along the way. As children, we are fearless. We try new things without hesitation. We fall and get back up. We dream big and believe that anything is possible. But as we grow older, we are conditioned to fear failure. We are taught to avoid risks and stick to what is safe and comfortable. We are bombarded with messages that failure is something to be ashamed of, something to be avoided at all costs. But let me tell you this. Failure is not the enemy. In fact, failure is a necessary part of success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. Think about it. Every successful person you admire has experienced failure. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity and imagination. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for television. Steve Jobs was fired from the company he co-founded. But did they let their failures define them? No. They used them as stepping stones to their success. So why do we fear failure so much? It is because we attach our self-worth to our achievements. We believe that if we fail, we are failures. But let me tell you this. Failure is an event, not a person. Just because you failed at something does not mean that you are a failure. It simply means that you have not yet succeeded. And the only way to succeed is to keep trying, to keep pushing through the fear of failure. Now I'm not saying that failure is easy to deal with. It can be devastating. It can be demoralizing. It can even be embarrassing. But it is in those moments of failure that our character is truly tested. It is in those moments that we have a choice. To let failure defeat us, or to use it as a stepping stone to success. So, how do we overcome the fear of failure when setting goals? The first step is to reframe our mindset. Instead of viewing failure as something to be avoided, view it as a learning opportunity. Embrace the idea that failure is a necessary part of the journey toward success. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. The second step is to set realistic expectations. Many times we set ourselves up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. This does not mean that we should not dream big, but we should also break down our goals into smaller, achievable steps. This way, even if we do not reach our ultimate goal, we can still celebrate the progress we have made. The third step is to have a growth mindset. Instead of focusing on the outcome, focus on the process. See each failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. As long as you are making progress, you are moving in the right direction. The fourth step is to surround yourself with a supportive network. We become like the people we spend the most time with. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who encourage you, and who will pick you up when you fall. And remember, it is not about the number of people in your network, it is about the quality of those relationships. And the fifth and final step is to take action. As the saying goes, action cures fear. The longer we wait, the more our fear of failure grows. So take that first step, no matter how small it may seem. And when you do fail, and you will, do not let it stop you from taking the next step. With number one, I want to address a crucial topic that often gets overlooked. The lack of accountability when it comes to goal setting. We live in a world where everyone wants success, but very few are willing to take responsibility for their actions. We have become a society of excuses, blaming others and external factors for our failures. We have lost sight of the power of accountability, and it is hindering our growth and potential. Accountability is the foundation of success. It is the willingness to take ownership of our choices, actions, and results. It is the understanding that we are in control of our lives, and that our decisions shape our future. Without accountability, 
We are like ships without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But why is accountability so crucial when it comes to goal setting? Let me tell you a story. Imagine two individuals, John and Sarah, both with the same goal of losing 20 pounds. John sets a goal to lose 20 pounds in three months and holds himself accountable. He creates a plan, tracks his progress, and makes necessary adjustments along the way. Sarah, on the other hand, sets the same goal but does not hold herself accountable. She makes excuses, skips workouts, and indulges in unhealthy food choices. After three months, John has successfully lost 20 pounds, while Sarah has only lost 5 pounds. What made the difference? Accountability. John took responsibility for his actions and stayed committed to his goal, while Sarah let excuses and lack of accountability stand in her way. Now let me ask you, who do you think will feel a sense of accomplishment and pride? Who will have more confidence and motivation to set and achieve more significant goals? It is evident that accountability is the key to success. So how can we cultivate accountability in our lives? The first step is to take ownership of our choices. We must stop making excuses and blaming others for our failures. It is time to take a hard look in the mirror and acknowledge that our decisions have led us to where we are today. When we take responsibility for our actions, we gain the power to change our circumstances. The next step is to set clear and specific goals. Without a clear destination, we cannot hold ourselves accountable for our progress. When setting goals, be specific about what you want to achieve. Create a plan and set a timeline. This will give you a roadmap to follow and track your progress. But setting goals and taking ownership is not enough. We must also have the courage to hold ourselves accountable. It takes courage to admit when we have fallen short of our expectations. It takes courage to admit our mistakes and make necessary changes. But it is this courage that will push us to grow and achieve our goals. Another crucial aspect of accountability is having a support system. We all need someone who will hold us accountable and push us to be our best selves. It can be a friend, a mentor, or a coach. Having someone to share our goals and progress with can provide us with the motivation and encouragement we need to stay on track. Now I understand that accountability can be intimidating. It means taking responsibility for our failures and admitting when we have fallen short. But let me tell you, the rewards of accountability far outweigh the fear. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become the masters of our destiny. We gain control over our lives and have the power to shape our future. Accountability also builds character and integrity. When we take responsibility for our actions, we become trustworthy and reliable individuals. We become leaders who inspire and motivate others to take charge of their lives. But most importantly, accountability leads to success. When we hold ourselves accountable, we become unstoppable. We are no longer held back by excuses and external factors. We become focused and determined to achieve our goals, and nothing can stand in our way. So my friends, as we continue on our journey of personal development, I urge you to cultivate accountability in your lives. Take ownership of your choices, set clear and specific goals, have the courage to hold yourself accountable, and surround yourself with a supportive network. Remember, accountability is the key to success, and it is within each and every one of us to unlock its power. In part two of this series, we will dive deeper into personal development and how it ties into accountability. But for now, I leave you with this quote by the great Zig Ziglar. Accountability is the glue that ties commitment to the result. So let us all commit to being accountable for our goals and watch as we achieve success beyond our wildest dreams. Thank you. In today's message, I want to discuss a topic that I believe impedes many of us from reaching our full potential in personal growth, and that is the perilous habit of comparison. We live in a society where we are constantly bombarded with images and stories of people who appear to have it all together, who seem to be living their best lives, while we feel stuck and inadequate. It's easy to fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others and feeling like we're not measuring up. But I'm here to tell you that comparison is the enemy of progress. It robs us of our joy, motivation, and most importantly, our own unique journey towards personal growth. The truth is, we are all on our own paths and comparing ourselves to others only distracts us from our own growth and potential. But the good news is, you are not alone in this struggle. By listening to this message, you can turn things around and learn how to embrace your own journey and make progress towards your personal growth. So let's dive in and discover the five reasons why comparison is the enemy of progress in personal growth. 
Starting with number 5. Have you ever found yourself scrolling through social media, looking at other people's lives and feeling inadequate? Have you ever compared your success, your possessions, your relationships to those of others, and felt like you were falling short? If your answer is yes, then you are not alone. We have all fallen into the comparison trap at some point in our lives. And let me tell you, it is a trap that is easy to fall into, but difficult to escape. You see, comparison is a natural human tendency. We are wired to compare ourselves to others, to see where we stand in relation to them. And in today's society, with the rise of social media, it has become even more prevalent. We are bombarded with images and stories of people who seem to have it all. The perfect body, the dream job, the ideal relationship. And it's easy to get caught up in this never-ending cycle of comparison, where we constantly measure ourselves against others and feel like we're not good enough. But here's the thing. Comparison is a losing game. It is a game that we can never win because there will always be someone who is smarter richer, more successful than us. And when we constantly compare ourselves to others, we are setting ourselves up for failure. We are setting ourselves up to feel inadequate and unworthy. And this, my friends, is the biggest obstacle to personal growth. Our own self-doubt and insecurities. You see, when we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially saying that we are not enough. We are saying that our uniqueness, our individuality is not good enough. But here's the truth. Each and every one of us is unique. We all have our own strengths, our own talents, our own journey. And when we compare ourselves to others, we are robbing ourselves of the opportunity to embrace our uniqueness and tap into our full potential. Think about it. If we all tried to be like someone else, then who would we be? We would be nothing but clones living in a world of monotony. It is our differences that make us special, that make us stand out. And it is when we embrace our uniqueness that we can truly grow and thrive. You see, personal growth is not about becoming someone else or trying to fit into a mold. It is about becoming the best version of ourselves. It is about realizing our full potential and living a life that is authentic and true to who we are. And when we constantly compare ourselves to others, we are robbing ourselves of this opportunity. Now I know some of you may argue that comparison can be a good thing, that it can motivate us to work harder and achieve more. And I agree, to some extent, healthy competition can be a good thing, as long as it doesn't turn into comparison. But here's the thing. When we compare ourselves to others, we are not competing with them. We are competing with an idealized version of them. We are comparing ourselves to a highlight reel, not the full story. And this is not a fair comparison. So what can we do to break free from the comparison trap and embrace our uniqueness? The first step is to recognize when we are comparing ourselves to others. Awareness is key. Whenever you find yourself feeling inadequate or envious of someone else's life, take a step back and ask yourself, am I comparing myself to them? And if the answer is yes, then remind yourself that comparison is a losing game, and it is not a fair comparison. The next step is to shift our focus from others to ourselves. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, let's focus on our own journey our own progress. Let's set our own goals and work towards them without worrying about what others are doing. Let's celebrate our own successes and learn from our own failures, because at the end of the day, the only person we should be competing with is ourselves. And finally, let's embrace our uniqueness. Let's celebrate our differences and recognize that they are what make us special. Let's stop trying to fit into a mold, and instead, let's create our own path. Let's be proud of who we are, and let our individuality shine. Now, to number four. I know what some of you may be thinking. Isn't comparison a natural human tendency? After all, we are constantly surrounded by people who seem to have it all together, whether it's in terms of wealth, success, relationships, or physical appearance. We can't help but compare ourselves to them and feel inadequate or envious. But I am here to tell you that this mindset is a trap that we must break free from if we want to achieve true personal growth and fulfillment. You see, comparison is the thief of joy. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we are focusing on what we lack instead of what we have accomplished. We are measuring our worth based on someone else's standards instead of our own unique journey. And this can lead to a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction and self-doubt. Moreover, Comparison can also lead to unhealthy competition. 
When we are constantly trying to outdo others, we lose sight of our own goals and values. We become consumed with the idea of being better than someone else, rather than being the best version of ourselves. And this can create a toxic environment where we are not only competing with others, but also with ourselves, constantly striving for unattainable perfection. But let me ask you this. What is the point of competing with others? Is it to prove that we are better than them? Is it to gain validation and approval from society? Or is it to fulfill our own personal desires and passions? The truth is, comparison and competition do not bring us any closer to our goals. In fact, they can distract us from our true purpose and hinder our progress. I want you to imagine a world where we all focused on our own journey instead of comparing it to others. A world where we celebrated each other's successes instead of feeling jealous or resentful. A world where we supported and uplifted one another instead of tearing each other down in the name of competition. That, my friends, is a world where true personal growth and fulfillment can thrive. So how do we break free from the trap of comparison and unhealthy competition? The first step is to recognize that we are all unique individuals with our own strengths, weaknesses, and paths in life. We cannot compare our journey to someone else's because it is simply not the same. We must learn to appreciate and embrace our own journey, no matter how different it may be from others. The second step is to focus on our own progress and growth, rather than comparing it to others. Instead of constantly trying to be better than someone else, let us strive to be the best version of ourselves. Let us set our own goals and work towards achieving them, without being influenced by what others are, doing. The third step is to cultivate a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity. When we compare ourselves to others, we are operating from a place of scarcity, the belief that there is only a limited amount of success and happiness to go around. But the truth is, there is enough success and happiness for everyone. When we shift our mindset to one of abundance, we can celebrate the success of others without feeling threatened or inadequate. And finally, let us remember that true personal growth and fulfillment come from within. It is not about being better than someone else, but about being the best version of ourselves. It is about discovering our own unique talents, passions and purpose, and using them to make a positive impact in the world. Now, to number three. As we embark on this journey of personal development, I want to address one of the biggest enemies we face in our pursuit of progress. Comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy, and it is also the enemy of progress. It is a dangerous trap that many of us fall into, often without even realizing it. We live in a society that is obsessed with comparison. We are constantly bombarded with images and messages that tell us we need to be better, do more, and have more in order to be successful and happy. In this never-ending race to keep up with others, we often lose sight of our own journey. But here's the truth. Comparison is a distraction. It takes our focus away from our own growth and development, and instead directs it towards others. When we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially saying that their journey is more important than our own. We are giving away our power and allowing others to dictate our path. In doing so, we are hindering our own progress. Each and every one of us is on a unique journey. Our experiences, strengths and weaknesses are all different. And that is something to be celebrated, not compared. When we compare ourselves to others, we are not only robbing ourselves of our own potential, but we are also doing a disservice to the world. We are all born with unique gifts and talents, and it is our responsibility to use them to make a positive impact. But when we are too busy comparing ourselves to others, we are not using our gifts to their full potential. Comparison also leads to a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction. We compare ourselves to someone who has more money, a better job, a nicer house, and we feel inadequate. And then when we achieve those things, we compare ourselves to someone who has even more. It's a never-ending cycle that only leads to unhappiness and discontent. We are constantly chasing after something that will never truly satisfy us, because we are always comparing ourselves to someone else. But here's the thing. Success is not a one-size-fits-all concept. What success looks like for one person may be completely different for another, and that's okay. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others and start defining success on our own terms. What matters is not what society tells us is successful, but what truly brings us joy and fulfillment. And that can only be discovered by focusing on our own journey, not someone else's. Comparison also hinders our growth and development because it often leads to self-doubt and insecurity. 
When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we start to doubt our own abilities and worth. We start to believe that we are not good enough, smart enough, or talented enough. And this negative self-talk only holds us back from reaching our full potential. We need to start believing in ourselves and our own journey. We need to understand that we are capable of achieving great things, and that our journey is just as important as anyone else's. Now I am not saying that we should never look to others for inspiration or guidance. It is important to have mentors and role models who can inspire us to be our best selves. But we need to be careful not to fall into the trap of comparison. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, we should use their success as motivation to work harder and become the best version of ourselves. We should learn from them, but not try to replicate their journey. We need to stay true to ourselves and our own path. So my message to you today is this. Comparison is the enemy of progress. It distracts us from our own journey and hinders our growth and development. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others and start focusing on our own journey. We need to define success on our own terms and believe in our own abilities. We are all on a unique journey, and it is up to us to make the most of it. Let's stop comparing and start embracing our individuality, and using our gifts to make a positive impact in the world. Now, to number two. As I mentioned earlier, comparison is the enemy of progress. It is a thief of joy and a hindrance to personal growth. And today, I want to share with you why that is, and how we can overcome this destructive habit. First and foremost, comparison creates unrealistic expectations. When we compare ourselves to others, we are setting ourselves up for failure. We are comparing our behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel. We see their success and assume that it came easy to them, without realizing the hard work and sacrifices they had to make to get there. We forget that everyone's journey is different. We all have our own unique strengths, weaknesses, and circumstances. And when we compare ourselves to others, we are not only setting ourselves up for disappointment, but we are also disregarding our own journey and the progress we have made. Secondly, comparison robs us of our individuality. Each and every one of us is unique. We have our own talents, passions, and dreams. But when we constantly compare ourselves to others, we start to lose sight of who we truly are. We try to fit into someone else's mold, and in the process, we lose our own identity. We need to remember that our differences are what make us special. We should celebrate our individuality and use it to our advantage, rather than trying to be like someone else. As Oscar Wilde once said, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Furthermore, comparison leads to self-doubt and insecurity. When we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially telling ourselves that we are not good enough. We start to doubt our abilities and question our worth. We become our own worst critic, constantly comparing ourselves to others and finding ourselves lacking. But let me tell you something. You are enough. You are capable of achieving great things, and you have the potential to become the best version of yourself. Instead of comparing yourself to others, focus on your own progress and growth. Celebrate your successes, no matter how small they may seem. And remember, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't let it steal your confidence and self-worth. Moreover, comparison breeds jealousy and resentment. When we compare ourselves to others, we often feel envious of their success and resentful of our own perceived shortcomings. We start to view others as competition, and we become consumed with the idea of being better than them. But the truth is, there is no competition. We are all on our own journey, and we should be happy for others' success instead of feeling jealous or resentful. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, we should focus on our own growth and be inspired by the success of others. Lastly, comparison prevents us from being present and enjoying the journey. When we are constantly comparing ourselves to others, we are living in the past or the future instead of being present in the moment. We are either dwelling on our past failures or worrying about our future success instead of enjoying the journey and the progress we are making. But the journey is just as important as the destination. We need to learn to appreciate the process and the lessons we learn along the way. As the saying goes, comparison is the thief of joy. But gratitude is the key to happiness. Instead of comparing ourselves to others, let's focus on being grateful for where we are and how far we have come. Now, to number one. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we are essentially telling ourselves that we are not good enough, that we are not worthy of success and happiness. But here's the thing. Success and happiness are not one-size-fits-all. What may be success for one person may not be the same for another. 
Each one of us has our own unique journey and our own definition of success. So why do we constantly compare ourselves to others? Why do we let society dictate what success and happiness should look like for us? The truth is, comparison is a never-ending cycle. There will always be someone who is smarter, richer, more successful, or more attractive than us. And if we continue to compare ourselves to others, we will always feel inadequate and never truly happy or fulfilled. So how do we break free from this cycle of comparison? The first step is to recognize that comparison is a destructive habit. It serves no purpose in our personal growth journey. Instead, it holds us back and prevents us from reaching our full potential. Next, we need to shift our focus from external validation to internal validation. We often seek validation from others, whether it's through likes on social media or compliments from our peers. But true validation comes from within. We need to learn to appreciate and celebrate our own accomplishments, no matter how small they may seem. We also need to understand that everyone's journey is different. We are all on our own unique paths, and there is no right or wrong way to reach our goals. When we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially comparing our chapter 1 to someone else's chapter 10. We don't know the struggles and challenges they have faced to get to where they are, and it is not fair to compare our journey to theirs. Another important aspect to consider is that comparison often leads to imposter syndrome. When we constantly compare ourselves to others, we start to doubt our abilities and feel like we are not deserving of our success. We start to believe that we are not as talented or capable as others, and this can hold us back from taking risks and pursuing our dreams. But let me tell you, you are not an imposter. You are unique, talented, and capable in your own way. Embrace your uniqueness and let go of the need to compare yourself to others. Furthermore, comparison robs us of our joy and gratitude. When we are constantly focused on what we don't have or what we haven't achieved, we fail to appreciate the blessings and successes in our own lives. We need to learn to be grateful for what we have and celebrate our own journey, rather than constantly looking at what others have and feeling envious. In closing, my friends, comparison is indeed the enemy of progress and personal growth. It leads to self-doubt, low self-esteem, and imposter syndrome. It robs us of our joy and gratitude, and prevents us from reaching our full potential. So let us make a conscious effort to break free from this destructive habit and focus on our own journey. Let us celebrate our uniqueness and learn to appreciate and validate ourselves. And most importantly, let us remember that success and happiness are not a competition. Each one of us is on our own journey, and we are all worthy of success and happiness in our own way. Thank you.